343 Guilty Spark is my favourite mission in Halo Combat Evolved and quite possibly in the entire Halo franchise. It is scary, it is wonderfully designed and it is full of clever little details from start to finish and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit more about why it's so special. But before I begin, a quick roundup of events leading in to 343 Guilty Spark. Master Chief and his AI companion Cortana crash land on the mysterious Installation 04 following an attack on the ship the Pillar of Autumn by humanity's sworn enemy, the Covenant. After rescuing the Autumn's captain, Jacob Keyes, from a Covenant ship, Keyes reveals that the Covenant believe Installation 04 to be a weapon of some kind, a weapon they plan to use. While Keyes leads a squad to a facility where a weapons cache is supposedly located, Master Chief and Cortana head to an island which is rumoured to house a map room that will lead them to Installation 04's control room. After finding the map room and pinpointing the control room's exact location, the pair battle their way to it, at which point this scene occurs. The Covenant found something, buried in this ring, something horrible, and now they're afraid. Something buried? Where? The Captain, we've got to stop the Captain! Keys? What the weapons we cache he's looking for, it's not really... We can't let him get inside. I don't understand. There's no time. Get out of here, find Keys, stop him. Before it's too late! And thus begins 343 Guilty Spark. Bungie immediately begins developing a sense of dread by combining the chapter title well enough alone with scenes of the Covenant fleeing something. On any other occasion, seeing the Covenant so terrified would most definitely be a good thing, but after Cortana's warning at the end of the previous mission, here not so much. Well Enough Alone is a chapter title taken from the longer phrase, should have left well enough alone, and is fitting not only because of what transpires later on in the mission, but also because you are quite literally alone. You left Cortana behind in the control room and there's not a marine in sight. It's just you, the Covenant, the Swamp, and a human voice coming from somewhere nearby. Investigating further, you'll find a downed pelican, and as you draw closer, you're able to listen to a radio message which won't do much to reassure you. Although that being said, a shotgun can be found here if you're playing on easy difficulty, which might make you feel a little bit better, I suppose. These opening scenes mark the start of a sharp tonal shift in Halo's campaign. The majority of the game's missions up until this point featured plenty of bright, open spaces, and you often had plenty of marines on hand to help keep you company as well. There were some narrow environments you traversed alone, but other than the odd run-in with invisible elites, these never tended to be much more threatening than any other encounter. 343 Guilty Spark Swamp, on the other hand, is a narrow environment which feels very threatening indeed. It's claustrophobic, visibility is reduced, and it generally feels like an extremely oppressive place. Missions like the Silent Cartographer and Assault on the Control Room made you really feel like a super soldier leading into 343 Guilty Spark, but as you begin to make your way through the swamp, you may begin to feel less powerful and a lot more vulnerable. The radio message in the Downed Pelican mentioned some new kind of hostile, and although what exactly this new kind of hostile is won't be revealed for a while yet, Bungie does throw in a few hints of what's to come for those paying attention to what's going on around them. As you explore the swamp, you might notice multiple yellow dots appear on your radar in the bottom left corner of the screen. These usually indicate where other marines are located on the map, but there's not a marine in sight. You may also notice strange figures moving around in the shadows, which certainly don't look like Covenant figures it's possible to miss entirely if you're not switched on. This one watches you from a vantage point, there's more to be spotted in two different places almost immediately after, directly ahead of you and on an inaccessible ridge nearby, and if you're really keeping an eye out, you may also spy one darting through the swamp as well. You'll also likely come across a downed Covenant dropship, an unusual sight indeed, and between it and the earlier scenes of grunts and jackals fleeing, it's clear that the Covenant are having a fairly bad time. Bungie including these details so early on in the mission is vital to 343 Guilty Spark working as well as it does. 
Firstly, because they help increase tension at a very early point in the level, but not in a manner which feels forced or gratuitous, and also because they hopefully quickly teach you that the little details are important. 343 Guilty Spark arguably does more environmental storytelling than any other mission in Combat Evolve's campaign, and by packing this small space at its start with so many things to spot, Bungie pushes you to keep an eye out for more during the rest of the mission's runtime. Those not paying attention to their surroundings will miss quite a bit, whereas those who are more observant will quickly gain an understanding of what Bungie is trying to achieve and have a far more rewarding experience as a result. To a certain extent at least, you get out of 343 Guilty Spark what you're willing to put in. As you approach the facility itself, the sound of gunfire and explosions cuts through the air, muzzle flashes light up the swamp, and you'll catch sight of more Covenant running for their lives. The gunshots in question could have come from Keyes' team as they entered the facility, but given that earlier on you can spot creatures which are eventually revealed to be the Flood, I'd say it's much more likely that it's them setting a trap for Master Chief. But before heading inside to hopefully find out exactly who was doing the shooting, you'll need to take out the Covenant stragglers outside, and you might notice something else here, or you may have already noticed it when fighting the few Covenants you've already encountered. There's not an Elite in sight. Elites act as leaders for the numerous Covenant squads you'll encounter during Halo's campaign, and the majority will have at least one in their ranks, but so far during 343 Guilty Spark, they have been suspiciously absent, and things continue to get even more unsettling once the Covenant have been dispatched, with noises that sound suspiciously flood-like ringing out in the swamp if you linger for a moment or two. This continued attention Bungie pays to building a dark, oppressive horror atmosphere throughout this opening section is absolutely fantastic, and I'd argue they do a better job of it than some horror games manage over a similar period of time. The atmosphere of the swamp itself probably would have been enough, but when combined with everything else I've mentioned, it makes for an incredibly strong opening that I'd wager will have had a great impact on most the first time they played the mission. As you finally make your way inside the facility and an elevator leading deeper inside rises to greet you, you'll no doubt be somewhat nervous about what's coming next, which is an unfamiliar feeling. Your Master Chief, one of humanity's finest, a man who has been blasting his way through wave after wave of Covenant for quite some time now. What could there possibly be down here that you haven't already conquered? But just as you're starting to really feel a palpable sense of dread, the pace of 343 Guilty Spark changes completely. The swamp was dark and terrifying, but now you're face to face with the Covenant again in an environment with far better visibility, and everything feels right in the world. There's still not an elite in sight, which is a little strange, but after a firefight or two you may almost begin to forget what you saw in the swamp. That is of course until you discover a strange yellow liquid dripping from the ceiling, the corpse of a jackal laying nearby, the walls painted with its blood, and dead Covenant who seemingly tried to unsuccessfully barricade themselves inside a room. There are even turrets and shields set up not to stop you from progressing further into the facility, but to seemingly stop something leaving it instead, and they're pointed at a door with a big red symbol on it. You most likely will have noticed this symbol dotted around the facility already, but they've always been blue instead of red. Red, of course, course being the colour for danger, and they haven't had a whole load of weaponry pointed at them either. And throughout all of these discoveries, there's no music used whatsoever. So often during Halo the soundtrack will swell during pivotal moments, but throughout this entire section there's little to be heard other than the echoes of the facility itself. It really helps create a feeling of isolation as you continue to explore. At this point, you may quite rightfully be more than a little anxious about heading deeper into the facility, and you may even decide to head back to the swamp instead of progressing any further. So you take the elevator back up and head outside. Everything seems normal at first glance, until you notice the corpses of a number of marines which definitely weren't there previously, yet another sign that all is not well in this particular part of Installation 04. And so you head back inside the facility and continue to explore there, at which point you'll come across a crazed marine ranting about events which recently transpired. Stay back! Stay back! You're not turning me into one of those things! I'll blow your brains out! Get away from me! Don't touch me, you freaks! I won't be like you! I'll die first! Find your own hiding place! The monsters are everywhere! 
Now this is classic horror, the frenzied survivor of something babbling incoherently about what they've just witnessed. Intelligible enough that you understand something bad is about to happen, but not clear enough that you're certain what to expect. And judging by the horrendous scene which greets you once you leave him, whatever it is, you should be very, very concerned. The jackal you discovered earlier was not a particularly pleasant thing to find, but this is on a whole other level, and you might notice that among the dead, there's still not a single elite. Not far away, you'll come across another dead marine, followed by the discovery of one more as a cutscene kicks in. As an aside, it's a little odd that these marines are here given the Flood's love of using human bodies for their own nefarious means, but I'm okay with giving Bungie a little artistic license here and there given the overall quality of the level. As you watch the marines' video log, you get to relive your journey through the swamp and into the facility through someone else's eyes. The sequence featuring Keys and the rest of his squad feels very much like a tribute to James Cameron's Aliens and the scene in which Ripley watches marines being slaughtered via their video feeds. There's also a scene in which the squad discovers an elite whose chest has seemingly burst open, which again feels like one straight out of the Alien franchise, and one of the marines even says, I got a bad feeling about this. A line used multiple times during Aliens. As the video feed draws near to its end, things take a turn for the worse as Keys and his team meet the Flood, before it promptly ends. Once the video has concluded, you'll very quickly come to a horrifying realisation. You're in the same room as the Marine was in at the end of the footage. Bungie very cleverly gives you just enough time to worry, or indeed panic, about what you just witnessed, and to find the ammo and bloodstains left by the previous group on the floor nearby, before the Flood make their grand entrance. This encounter and those which follow up until you leave the facility are very, very well done, in that there are three clear stages of escalation. First, you face infection forms, the weakest flood form, which gives you time to get used to a new type of playstyle. Up to this point, you fought the Covenant exclusively, which I'd say required more traditional combat tactics, whereas fighting the flood is much more about crowd control. Taking on the Covenant meant timing your attacks, utilising cover and choosing the right weapons, whereas successfully tackling the Flood means learning when it's best to back away, something the infection forms encourage right off the bat. Once you've got used to killing infection forms, it's time for things to ramp up a gear. After a few waves have been dispatched, the first combat forms then make an appearance, and you'll most likely suddenly realise why you've seen no elites so far. They've all been turned into Flood. With infection and combat forms now on the prowl, you'll have to work a little harder to survive, something the Covenant isn't managing to do too well in the next room. It's important this encounter between the Covenant and the Flood is placed where it is, as it demonstrates clearly the new faction dynamics now the Flood have been introduced. You've probably already concluded that the Flood are out to kill everything, but it's made very obvious here, just in case you had any doubts. Bungie does also put some power back into your hands during this section by providing you with a shotgun, but they're not above making you suffer either. Heading back to the lift which brought you into the facility, you press the button to call it, at which point it comes crashing down in front of you. If you thought there was any chance of an easy escape, here your hopes are very quickly dashed. Thankfully, however, there is another elevator for you to make use of, but once you're on it, instead of it taking you out of the facility, it takes you even deeper inside, and there's plenty of Covenant blood splashed across the shaft, just in case you aren't already demoralised enough. Upon reaching the bottom, it's time for the third part of the encounter escalation I talked about earlier. First you faced infection forms, then things got a bit trickier with the introduction of combat forms, and finally you're now tasked with taking on combat forms with weapons. Not only is this fantastic encounter design in that Bungie gives you more time to adjust by using a gradual difficulty curve, but it also adds a layer of uncertainty. To begin with, you were just fighting relatively weak infection forms, and now the Flood is shooting at you. It makes you extremely extremely uncertain as to what might be coming next. Unfortunately, however, what comes next is probably the weakest part of 343 Guilty Spark, as you race through a number of very similar looking rooms and corridors as you try to find a way to escape the unfolding nightmare. At first, the environment does sort of work. It is grey and repetitive without doubt, but it does also put the focus squarely on the flood as opposed to your surroundings, which brings with it a certain increase in intensity. You're stuck in a maze-like environment with a horrifying foe who just won't stop coming. It's a very relentless experience, for a time at least. Eventually, however, it does begin to feel rather repetitive. 
Having played 343 Guilty Spark more times than I'd care to admit, I personally have no trouble finding my way around, but for first time players I think the map has the potential to be a little too confusing considering the lack of overly obvious waypoints. But there is one bonus to spending maybe a little too long in the depths of the facility, and it's that there's more chance you'll notice this amazing little detail. In one of the facility's rooms, lying dead back to back, are two marines and two jackals, surrounded by a small stockpile of weapons and ammunition. The implication being that the four put their differences aside to fight together against a far more terrifying enemy, even if only for a few brief moments. It's perhaps my favourite of all the clever examples of environmental storytelling Bungie does during the mission, a detail perhaps missed by many that infers so much if you're paying attention to your surroundings. Continuing to battle through what may feel like a never-ending onslaught of flood, you'll eventually find another elevator and finally begin making your way back to the surface, where you'll find a squad of marines and can breathe at least a small sigh of relief. Sir, thank god you're here. We've been lost out here for hours. After we lost contact with the rest of the mission, we, we headed for the RV point and then these, these, these things, they ambushed us. We gotta get out of here. After previously feeling like prey being hunted by a predator you not long ago did not even realise existed, here Bungie again put some of the power back into your hands as you storm the swamp alongside the marines. Lulling you into a false sense of security is something Bungie did brilliantly at the start of the mission, where the dark and unsettling swamp gave way to fairly run of the mill encounters with the Covenant inside the facility, and they do it extremely well here towards the end of 343 Guilty Spark as well. They're a flood which need to be dispatched, but you're part of a large squad, and you may begin to feel like everything isn't so bad, like the tide may finally be turning. That is until you enter a narrow path, your radar lights up, you're ambushed from all sides, and I'd guess that newfound air of confidence you've found will quickly disappear. It's another classic horror moment that again feels like one which would be right at home in the Alien franchise. Thankfully, you're soon saved by the titular 343 Guilty Spark and a number of Sentinels as the mission reaches its conclusion. But before I wrap things up, I want to also quickly touch on the Anniversary Edition's graphics, as those featured in 343 Guilty Spark are perhaps the worst in the entire remake. I'm not going to mention everything that's wrong with them, as I'd be here for a while, but there are a few examples I want to highlight just to give you an idea of how bad they are. The Swamp as a whole is perhaps the worst offender. What was once a dark, foreboding place is now far, far too bright, and it loses much of its oppressive atmosphere. The bloodstains have also been greatly reduced. The room covered in Covenant blood, for example, simply doesn't have the same impact, nor does the corridor where you find the dead jackal. And finally, the interior of the facility has been hugely over-designed. It feels like packing in as much detail as possible was the objective, as opposed to adding more nuance. What was once a stark environment is instead now quite a bit too busy for my liking. These issues, however, should not distract us from the fact that 343 Guilty Spark is an absolutely outstanding piece of first-person shooter design. Bungie trusts you to find many of the little details yourself, they expertly pace the entire experience, and they lean into various horror tropes without resorting to parody. Halo Combat Evolved is without doubt one of the greatest first-person shooters of all time, and is a game most will remember for its action-packed sandbox gameplay. But in my view, it should also be remembered because of 343 Guilty Spark. Not only because it is a brilliant example of how to construct a high quality, engaging mission, but also because there's no doubt in my mind that it is one of the best examples of how to do first person horror in the entire genre. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you had a frighteningly good time, do consider liking, subscribing and letting me know your thoughts, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon.